Hey, I'm John. I became a millionaire after working five years as a software engineer. And in today's video, I want to be sharing the 10 financial strategies that I followed that helped me grow my six figure income to a seven figure net worth. Let's jump right in. Starting with number one, make a lot of money. The median entry level total compensation for a software engineer in San Francisco Bay Area is $178,000. And that's pretty close to what I was making my first year right out of college. I have my bachelor's and master's in computer science and I worked very hard to get a high paying job right after I graduated. And I worked even harder to get promoted so that I could make even more money early on in my career. But making money is only one part of the equation. More than half of Americans making six figures live paycheck to paycheck. And I knew that I didn't want to be like most people so I had to learn how to get really savvy with my money. It's important to acknowledge that it's an immense privilege to be making so much money especially so young and I don't take it for granted. I don't come from a wealthy family so I have 100% been taking advantage of this opportunity for me to build my own wealth because I know that no one else is going to do it for me. And having this mindset really helped me become a millionaire in my 20s and I say this to let people know that it's possible. So now let's talk about strategy. One way I worked towards my financial goals was to always live below my means, not within my means but below my means. A good rule for budgeting is the 50-30-20 rule. This is where you spend 50% of your income on your needs like housing, transportation, bills, etc. Then you spend 30% on your wants like traveling, eating out, shopping, all of that fun stuff. And you put 20% towards your savings for paying off debt, building your emergency fund, and investing for the future. This is a really good budget for most people, but like I said in the beginning, I didn't want to be like most people. And so I did a variation of the 50 30 20 rule where I put 50% of my income towards savings and investments, 30% towards my needs, and 20% on my wants. As an example, I started off my career making six figures and I could have easily rented out my own place, but I chose to live with roommates to keep my expenses low. And it's the same reason why I chose to buy an old but reliable used car for cash instead of buying new. By keeping my expenses low, I was able to put more money towards investments so that my wealth could grow. I also had an advantage that I worked at a tech company with a lot of really great perks. I had free transportation to and from work. I had free food so I never had to buy groceries. And I also had access to a free gym so I didn't have to pay for a membership. I was very fortunate that not only was I making a lot of money but I was also able to keep my overall expenses even lower because of all the perks that I had. And again, I didn't take it for granted. I took advantage of the opportunity. And keep in mind that I only had 20% of my income for my wants. 20% of a six figure salary is still a lot of money so I was still able to live a pretty comfortable lifestyle still eating out hanging out with friends traveling going to music festivals all of that fun stuff it also helps that I embrace minimalism and essentialism so I'm not really consuming a lot of excess stuff in the first place and I'm very intentional with how I spend my money by living below my means I was able to save and invest more than half of my income every single year and this not only helped me become a millionaire in my 20s but I'm on track to becoming a multi-millionaire in my 30s and also becoming financially independent in my 40s and I know a lot of things can happen between now and when I'm in my 40s like getting married having kids kids, buying a house, stuff like that. But I know at the very least that I've invested so much money that I could spend 100% of my income for the next few decades and I'd still be a multimillionaire at age 65. And that's pretty powerful. An easy way I manage to implement this budget is to make sure that I always pay myself first. A good example of this is that I max out my 401k every single year. And if you don't know, 401k is a retirement account sponsored by my employer. So I put in money for retirement and if I want to take it out for any other purpose, in general, I'd have to pay a penalty. And that incentivizes me to keep my money there and not to spend it. I get paid an annual bonus and that's typically 15 to 20% of my base salary and I put 100% of that towards my 401k. And because it's sponsored by my employer, they're able to take it directly out of my paycheck so I don't even get a chance to spend it at all. The best part of paying yourself first is that you can spend your money guilt-free knowing that your savings and investments are taken care of. Now I want to talk about how I save money and that's through sinking funds. And sinking funds is a fancy term for regularly setting aside money for future expenses. For example, my car is 19 years old and I have a vehicle sinking fund in case it needs to be repaired or replaced which is very likely because it's old. I I currently have $8,600 in this fund and I contribute $200 a month to it and this way I don't have to worry about if my car breaks down I don't have to worry about scrambling for the money. You can use sinking funds for basically any future expense. I have a sinking fund for taxes, I have one for gift giving, and I have one for all of my future trips for Japan, Vegas, LA, and Maui. So I'm super excited for all of those trips and I'm super excited that I know that I'll have enough money for all of those trips because of sinking funds. And sinking funds is not really a way to grow your wealth. You can't really save your way to a million dollars or you can but it's going to take very long. But sinking funds are really helpful so that you don't have to sell off your investments to pay for any of your expenses, you could just pay for it in cash. The most common sinking fund is an emergency fund, you probably heard about this. And again, the power of an emergency fund is that you don't have to sell off any of your investments, which is something that you definitely don't want to do if it's a down market. Also, having an emergency fund helped me make more riskier investments because I knew that I had a financial safety net in case it didn't go through. And that brings me to my next point, investing, particularly investing early and investing often. The investments I made early in my career helped me reach the million dollar mark a lot sooner because my investments were able to grow and compound over time. Let me pull up my stats. 
If we look at the time I became a millionaire, you can see that there was a total of $240,000 contributed to my 401k. I did not put all of this money there. My employer has a really generous 401k match, so every dollar that I put into my 401k, they also put in some money on my behalf as well. So I did the math and I contributed $190,000. My employer put in $50,000 and my total balance for my 401k was $353,000 because my investments were able to grow by $112,000. This shows is that if I did not invest my money, I would not have received my employer match and I would not have my investments grow by six figures. And that right there is the power of investing and that's just one of my investment accounts. I'll admit that investing was one of the hardest concepts for me to learn because the thought of losing money was just really hard for me to accept. But the whole point of investing is that you'll buy assets that will increase in value over time otherwise why would you buy it right and over a long period of time like decades you can expect the stock market to grow at an average annual rate of around 10 percent and that's based on historical data another way to think about it is that your investments will grow up and down but over time it'll trend upwards so the sooner that you invest your money the more time it has to grow next i want to talk about maxing out my tax advantage accounts i have maxed out my tax advantage accounts pretty much every single year i think except my first year just because i didn't know about it this ties back to paying yourself first and living below your means this year in 2024 i have three tax advantage accounts that i'm going to be maxing out, I'll be contributing $4,150 into my health savings account or HSA, $7,000 into my Roth IRA, and $69,000 into my 401k and that's including my employer match. So just for this year, I'll be investing over $80,000 into my tax advantage accounts. If these terms sound like nonsense to you, I recommend reading Money Out Loud by Berna and Nat. She explains financial concepts in a way that anyone can understand, which is why I always recommend her book for anyone that wants to become financially literate. A lot of personal finance nowadays is outdated or unrelatable for many reasons, which is why I really love her book because she she is Filipino American just like me, millennial just like me, and from the Bay Area just like me. And so this is why representation really matters, especially in the personal finance space. I'm not going to go into the nitty gritty details of each account, but just know that taxes can have a significant impact on building wealth. So taking advantage of these tax advantage accounts are a great way to overcome that. You're probably wondering what did I invest in? And so let's talk about that next. So the largest part of my portfolio at the time and became a millionaire was low cost diversified index funds that track the stock market. The idea behind that is that I can meet my financial goals with a 10% average return of the stock market. And so I really didn't need to take on any additional risk by investing in individual stocks or stuff like that. So I invest in these index funds with the expectation that I will not have to touch them for a very long time. And so I could just set it and forget it and let my investments grow, which is also the Boglehead philosophy of investing. Before I talk about the rest of my investments, I do want to talk about luck because I got lucky in a few different ways. Number one, I did not know about the importance of diversifying my stock portfolio, so I did not sell any of my company stock for three years, and it just so happens that my company stock did really well, and so my net worth benefited from that. Number two, I also benefited when the stock market crashed during the pandemic because everything was closed, I wasn't going anywhere, and so I had a lot more disposable income to invest, and also I was able to buy stocks at a huge discount, and so when the stock market recovered, and then some, my net worth also benefited from that. Number three, I got lucky because I bought crypto, and I know a lot of people got burned by crypto, but for me, I went into it knowing that it was more of a calculated risk than an investment. I only put in what I was willing to lose and I just got lucky that crypto skyrocketed and so did my net worth. Luck played a role, but as the saying goes, luck is when preparation meets opportunity. If I was not financially literate, I would not have benefited from being lucky. I live below my means, which is why I never sold my company's stock in the first place because I didn't need that money. I knew when the stock market is down, that means it's a good time to buy, whereas most people were taking their money out of the stock market because they were afraid that it was going to go down even lower. And I knew that buying crypto was a risk. If it went down to zero dollars, I would still be fine financially because I had my emergency fund and everything else. If you want me to break down what was exactly in my first million dollar portfolio, reply to this video with show me the money and if enough people comment then I'll make that video. One of the best strategies that worked for me was that I turned my finances into a game and I made finances fun for me. I started to track everything, how much money I had in the bank, how much money I was making, and how much money I was spending. And by tracking these numbers on a monthly basis, I was able to understand where I was financially and whether or not I was working towards my financial goals and if not, what I needed to do to correct the course. My financial goal was not necessarily to be a millionaire in my 20s. My financial goal was to build up enough wealth so that I could essentially have the option to retire early. Turning my finances into a game like just genuinely made finances fun for me. I enjoyed seeing my numbers go up. I remember hitting my first 100k, 200k, 500k and so on and now I'm at the point where I'm kind of like forecasting my net worth so I know when I'm gonna hit the 2 million mark etc etc. So I've just become 
a total financial nerd and I'm not mad about it, honestly. <laughs> Seeing my numbers go up incentivized me to make more money, to invest more money, to cut down on unnecessary expenses because by doing so, that helped me level up, so to speak. By building the discipline to track my finances, I was able to consistently make progress towards all of my financial goals. If you made it this far and you're thinking, wow, this guy did a lot of work, I'll admit that I did, but it's so worth it. If it was easy, then everyone would be doing it. Honestly, once you get over the learning curve and you figure out what to do, then you can automate a lot of the work. I automate the majority of my finances, so I only really have to look at most once a month, but being a financial nerd and just like being curious, I do check it a bit more often than I should. If you want to know more about how I automate my finances, check out this video. It has nice graphs and all the nitty gritty details of how I manage my money. And if you want to know more about how software engineers get paid, check out this video where I break down the total compensation of software engineers and I share how much money I've made throughout my career. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.